After six months of development and testing out various different ideas, I'd like to introduce to you Obsidian, featuring a mini funnel wall, a spacious open core, and two roof bunkers. This is the perfect small group base for a bi-weekly or monthly wipe. And before the base door, I'd be really happy if you subscribed, as it really helps out the channel. First, we'll look at the upkeep of the externals. This one and the one opposite are just connected to the wide gap. As you can see, you can fill these TCs up and leave them for a whole week. Next, I'll show you the other gatehouses. These are connected to the front of wall and parts of the shell, hence the higher upkeep. Of course, all externals are disconnectable, which I'll show in the tutorial. Gatehouses feature peaks on either side looking back into the compound. The triangle at half height to protect your head from getting shot. And with both the single doors open, this acts as an airlock too. Doubling up the chain link fences prevent you from getting shot when re entering your compound during a raid. The gates also enable you to control movement. Around the compound bedrooms, we have more chain link fences. So when you respawn here, you won't get killed instantly, and it gives you some nice peaks on the raiders. And it also acts as a funnel. You also notice that the furnaces are raised as high as possible, so grubbers can't use them to exit your compound. As you can see, the other sides of the base are mirrored, with gatehouses here and more compound bedrooms. Next, enter the mini funnel wall through one of four entrances. If raiders run through here with the door closed, they get caught in the shotgun traps. If they happen to blow the door, we've got more shotgun traps and a flame turret. There are two double doors blocking the entrance, should you accidentally leave one open. There are a couple of peaks into the funnel, one on this side and one on the opposite side too. The funnel also benefits from a breach peak looking straight into the gatehouse and more peaks into the other side of the funnel. Ramps in the ground elevate you, so you can easily shoot anyone in the head. To offer the best range of peaks possible, on this side we have a wide gap china wall. So as the base is symmetrical on two sides, we have two wide gap china walls and two funnel walls. I chose to do it this way as it gives you a nice range of peaks while making the upkeep a bit lower. And in four sections of the shell, we have an integrated farm. This is perfect for protecting your crops and keeping them in the best health. Enter the base through an entrance on either side that has a ladder hatch leading straight up and down from the shooting floor. These are vital for online raid defense so you can get back up to the shooting floor from the compound bedrooms quickly. Use a chute to jump up to the second floor. Here we have a peek straight into the open core. Under the embrasure you'll find six boxes, three on either side. And jump up again to the third floor to access the open core, where we have space for 33 large boxes, including the ones under the floor. This is double the amount of the amethyst, which is the original version of this base. And you can enter into the core through the right hand loot room here. All this is protected by up to four turrets, two of which are located behind the ramps, making it very difficult to destroy. Jump down past the level three to enter the core. In here, there's everything you need to get your wipe going, including a ton of box base, bags, and furnaces. And here we can see the main TC upkeep, which can fit over 40 hours of materials. This is great for a monthly wipe, as you can leave the base for over a day and not have to worry about it. We have the entrance to the starter through the open core, as this gives really good mobility and increases the raid cost. And use the chute on either side to get up to the fourth floor. We have peaks looking back into the open court. There are four ramp peaks in total, enabling you to defend your base easily. A hell of a lot of thought went into designing this base, as it's no mean feat trying to fit this open core in this footprint with the bunkers. So I hope you appreciate it. In the center, we have a space for four beds and two large boxes. Lockers next to the ramps for your kits. To open the two bunkers, rotate a triangle roof and place it here. But if you're on console, you won't be able to rotate the roof, so you have to place it from underneath, which I'll show in the tutorial. The bunkers house our main batteries and have plenty of loot space for your boom. And the best thing is, they don't cost anything to seal. Exit onto the shooting floor through one of the two airlocks on either side of the base. Out here we have some absolutely amazing angles to defend from, covering the entire compound, the surrounding area, and the china wall. As you can see, we have a range of different peaks, giving you the upper hand against raiders as they won't know where you're going to shoot from next, making sure there's nowhere for raiders to sit and camp. On four sides of the base we have these low wall peaks which enable you to see really far out while crouching, which is perfect for the current meta. If you jump up here we have more peaks outside and onto the roof as well. And on the side with the funnel wall we have even more crazy angles to shoot from, including these gaps where the frame and the roof meet. And here we have a high breach peak which gives you an angle on any raid bases and turning around gives you another retake onto the roof. 
the space it's mirrored on two sides we have more low wall ramp peaks here with more jump ups and retakes onto the roof leaving no blind spots for grubs to sit in camp. To exit onto the roof itself go back into the main base through one of the two airlocks and jump up here where we have a retake onto the shooting floor. In the roof exit itself we have even more far away peaks and angles to retake your roof from and in the centre here you'll find six hidden loot boxes under the embrasure, three on either side. And here we have the other roof exit on the opposite side. The roof itself is protected by four turrets with space for a lot more if you wish and you can see we have a vast array of different roof defences including these ramp peaks. Personally I really like these single door peaks as you can see really far away, crouch to aim and it's really difficult for anyone to see you. And before moving on to the base build, I'd like to give a shout out to Skate to help me make the base much better than it was, especially with the shooting floor, roof and compound design. Check out his channel in the description where he uploads some of the most creative designs Rust has ever seen. This video is sponsored by HAL. HAL has just released slots, live games, and most importantly, crypto withdrawals. You can now deposit Rust skins, gamble on any slot you wish, and withdraw your winnings into crypto. We also added chat rain to claim free money every 30 minutes without having to bet your own. And a free Rust case to win up to $2,000 daily. For a limited time, you receive a 48% bonus when depositing with gift cards or crypto and receive money back with every bet you place. Use my code CROW for a free 50 cents. Check it out in the description. 18s and above only. Commence the build by placing down a square and six triangles. Next, surround with walls and leave a gap on the last triangle for the door. Everything in this tutorial will be in its final build grade, so upgrade when you can. After you sealed in the roof, place your TC on the right hand side of the square. Remember to lock it so your externals do their job. Then you can place a half height shelf in the main loot room. For more storage, add another loot room here. Feel free to spam as many garage doors in here as you like. Next, when you're ready to expand, add another square and surround with walls, with another entrance here. Then add another triangle and extend the walls up to the second floor for the new exit. In preparation for the next stage, you can add honeycomb to the squares. In this section of the honeycomb, you can put a large battery, but that's up to you. If you prefer, you could put them in the externals instead. To make the base symmetrical, you can put another large battery compartment here, but it will decrease the raid cost to TC. Again, that's up to you. For a temporary entrance to the base, put a twig roof on either side. When completed, your starter should look like this. And when you have the resources, you should armor these parts. In order for the bunkers to work, we need to wall step the base on two sides. To remove the roof, place a triangle and build out by seven squares. On the last square, place a triangle and remove all the build out. 
and expel back towards the base with a series of four half moons. Then put a triangle on the end. Upgrade these two foundations and then remove the build up apart from these three twig triangles. Now place a square, upgrading it to metal. Remove the twig. Place a square on either side. Then two triangles here, which need to be upgraded to HQM. Next place a twig triangle and a metal triangle here. And the same on the other side. Next remove the twig and place a metal triangle in the center. Then build a wall between these two triangle foundations and connect them all together with wall frames. Then seal the top of this part in and place two more walls, connect them together with half walls here. Now all these parts are connected together, we can build the external TC. We place three triangles here, two more twig triangles, two squares, and then the external TC housing. It's very important to put two half walls on this triangle for the disconnecting mechanism to work. Next, to connect the external to the gatehouse. Place a single door frame here, two triangle frames on top, and then two square frames. In the event that your main TC gets destroyed, you'll need to disconnect all four externals like this. Then after you've replaced your main TC, replace the frames. After that, finish the gatehouse. Make sure the doors are facing the correct way for the airlock to work. Now add the housings for the turrets. The turrets need to be pointed out slightly to give the best angles. When completed, this section should look like this. I used two-way symmetry to build this part to save time. So to do the other side, you'll need to rerun the video and watch it again. And when you complete completed both sides, we're going to add some more parts to the shell. On the left hand side, we'll have our farm. So you can wall this part in and put a door. Make sure the ceiling has a gap here. The wall frames must be upgraded to metal eventually for stability. And on the right hand side, we'll build our new entrance to the base. Leave the top open for the ladder hatch chute. The jump up will go here. Again, remember this floor needs to attach like this with a gap next to the base. This triangle frame adds more stability. If your foundations are too high to fit a planter or boxes here for the jump up, then you'll have to place a ramp instead. When completed, this area should look like this. Now do it again on the opposite side. Just like before, we're going to put our garden in here. On this side we'll have the main entrance to the base. Again, leaving the top of this part open for our ladder hatch. When it's all completed, the base should look like this.
Before we can seal in the compound, we're going to have to build two more externals and the Y-gap on this side. Place honeycomb here, but make sure to upgrade the wall behind first. We don't need to seal in the top yet, we can do that later. Next place is a square here, then a triangle, another square, a triangle, two more squares and another triangle. Now remove all the build up apart from the final triangle that you placed. Next build a Pac-Man shape of triangles, upgrading three of them for the gatehouse, remove this one build up by two squares and two triangles for the external housing. Again, make sure to place two half walls here for the disconnecting mechanism to work. Then connect the gatehouse to the external by putting a full wall here, two triangle frames, and two square frames just like before. Just like the other externals, you can disconnect these in the same way. After that, complete the compound bedrooms. Make sure the garage door faces away from you, so you can easily fit two beds in here. Next, we're going to build the wide gap foundations. Place a triangle, a square either side, two metal triangles in the center, and then build out with three triangles here and here, upgrading the last two. Connect them together with a half wall and a wall frame. Then build a half wall here and a window here, and the same on the other side. To build the chain link defences, place a square foundation here and a wall frame here. And do the same on this side. Then build the turret pods. Place another foundation in front of it, and then put a wall frame on the left hand side. And do the same again here, build the type pod, and then place the chain link fence. When completed, this section should look like this. Again, I use two-base symmetry for this, so you have to rewind the video and repeat this step on the opposite side of the base. Before sealing in the compound, we need to build the chain link fences on the first two gatehouses that we built, as I forgot to show you earlier. Also remember to put the chain link gates on the square foundation that connects the gatehouse to the front of wall, as shown in the tour. Repeat the step on the opposite side of the base, and then seal in the compound with 16 walls. This is just a rough guide, as ultimately it would depend on the type of the terrain that you're building on, as to how many walls you'll need, and their exact placement. Next place, barricades on top of the gatehouses.
build wind turbine towers on the first gatehouses that we built. These could be five high. If you want them to be higher, you had to have more wall frames. And then we can place our large furnaces. Make sure that they're as high as possible so grubs can't jump on them. Also, it's important to make sure you leave enough space between the chain link fences and the furnaces so you can run around the compound. Now to build the open core. First, surround the second and third floor with walls. Use alternating metal walls and stone walls as shown. I won't be using symmetry for this to make it easier for you to follow. And when you're happy with that, add another layer of metal walls all the way around. When finished, the base should look like this. Next, locate one of the two jump ups. Build a full wall, making sure the hard side is facing you. Another one on top, and the same on this side. In the center, build a window and a wall frame on top. Above the jump up, build a floor at half height. This is extremely important, otherwise you won't be able to finish the open core. Then seal in the top. Then do the same on this side for the entrance to the open core. I'm using metal frames instead of stone ones as this adds stability to the bunkers when you get raided. To seal this gap, you'll need to upgrade the outside wall to metal and make sure that you rotate the wall frame. They must be the same material to cover the gap. Then place a ceiling, making sure there's a gap next to the window. And seal this part in, place a single door frame and a vending machine. But if you're on console, don't place the vending machine yet. I'll explain later. Then extend the jump up on this side, adding another metal wall frame, and a triangle floor frame here for more stability. Again, we can cover this gap by upgrading the outside wall and rotating the wall frame. When you're happy with that, repeat this step on the opposite side of the base in exactly the same way. Again, don't add the vending machine yet if you're on a console. Now to build the open core loop rooms. Place half walls here, making sure the hard side is facing away from you. Then two half walls in the middle, and a seal with triangles. You can place boxes through the embrasures. If the half wall and the window are rotated correctly, this will cover any gaps. Next, place a wall here, making sure the hard side faces you. This will cover the gap in the back of the loop room. Then place a half wall on top, facing the same way, and the same on this side, but the hard side can face away from you. When you place these ceilings, make sure they attach to the stone wall frames. Put a triangle shelf in here, attach a twig square to the left hand wall, put a triangle through the wall, and then build your shelf. Then put a square shelf for more loot storage. As this side is not wall stacked, we can place a square anyhow, place a triangle through the wall, and then your shelf. Now repeat this on the side with the core entrance, adding a half wall facing you. Half wall facing away from you, the wall frames, the ceilings, 
and then the shelves. Again, making sure the twig square attaches to the left hand wall. And in this loot room, we can just put the square shelf. When completed, it should look like this. Next, jump up on top of the loot rooms, seal in this triangle, add a triangle in the center, and then add a frame on either side, making sure it attaches to the triangle you're standing on. If the floors and frames aren't placed correctly, you won't be able to build the ramp peaks. When done, seal in the roof. Now we can seal in the tops of the triangle honeycomb, making sure to delete the twig that we use to place the shelves. Also check down each piece of honeycomb before sealing it. As with two of them, we need to place a triangle frame for the ladder hatch. See in this one we can see the double door, that means you need to place a ladder hatch on it. Same in this one again, you see the double doors, place a ladder hatch. Now locate the jump up and build a full wall above the wall frame. It's very important you do it this way round. Then place a half wall and a low wall for the shooting floor peak. And then build the jump up. Now do the same on this side, again making sure the wall is above the wall frame entrance. Now to the left of the exit, we're going to build honeycomb here. This will be our turret pod with a half height shelf. And to the left of that, build a single door. Then place a full wall here and on the left of that too. Now here's where the bunker will go. Make sure to leave the wall stone for now. And do the same on this side, next to the other exit, with a turret pod here. Single door frame next to it. And then two full walls. Again, this is where the bunker will go, we'll just put stone walls here for now. Then add wall frames in these slots with garage doors. Garage doors should actually face away from you, so you can fit all the beds in here. Then on the right of the door, put a wall, and then another single door as an airlock. You'll put a garage door here if you prefer. Next we're going to seal in the roof. First place triangles all around the center. Next to the jump up, place a square. And above the airlock, place a triangle. And in this square, you need to place a frame attaching to the outer wall, and a square attaching to the inner. Now this part is really important, otherwise you'll brick your bunker. Make sure to place the triangle in the slot closest to you. There should be a gap on the other side. This can be covered with a rug. This is also important. Make sure the bunker roof attaches to the slot closest to you. Again, there will be a gap in the back. We'll cover this later. I'll repeat the steps again. Next to the jump up, place a square, and a triangle, a frame, and a square, then a triangle in the slot closest to you, and a square above the bunker, making sure there's a gap in the back. Now we can build the roof exits. Place a single demo here for the vending machine, and a wall on the other side. Then build two window frames on the triangle, and one here. Now build a triangle airlock. When you're happy with that, repeat this step on the other side.
now for the bunkers. If you're on PC, you can open it just like this. But if you're on console, this won't work. So instead, you'll need to place the roof through the vending machine, like this. I'm not entirely sure if this is possible on console, so you might have to leave out the vending machine and replace it with a single door so you can place the roof. Check the pinned comments for more information. Next, go outside, place two twig squares to stand on. Open the back wall with a triangle roof and then attach a triangle to the ceiling. This will seal the gap in the top. After that, put a half height shelf in the bunker. Now you can place your ladder hatch. If you place the ladder hatch already, you won't be able to build the triangle roof, so you have to remove it. Upgrade the shelf to stone, and now we can place the battery. It's much easier to place the battery when the walls of the bunker are metal or stone. It is possible to do when they're HGUM, but it is more difficult. Upgrade all the walls, making sure to rotate this one so the hard side faces you. The hard side of this wall should also face you. This enables us to cover these gaps. To cover the first gap, I grade this frame to HQM. If it's rotated correctly, the gap will be covered, as you can see. To cover the final gap of the bunker, place another frame on the outside here. I'll grade it to HQM and rotate it. Now all the gaps should be covered. If this one isn't, that means the frame is rotated incorrectly. Now repeat these steps again on the opposite side. Now for the funnel wall. Locate these triangles and build a ramp here. Place a double door in the frame and then a wall on the left hand side. Build more half walls on top, seal them in and build another floor at half height. Then place a window and a frame on top of that. Now repeat this on the opposite side. For the main part of the funnel, place two triangle foundations on either side. In the center, seal in these half walls, and then put the window on top. Now here, build a full wall, and then a single door frame. Seal in the top, place a half wall, and then a triangle at a half height in here. Now do the same again on this side. Then place your triangle roofs. If you're on console, you'll have to do this from above. Next, put wall frames on top and a triangle ceiling here and on the other side. Jump up and place a half wall here and another wall frame on top and again here. Then add three more wall frames to the front and seal in the triangle. Next jump over to this part, build stone wall frames on the front up by two floors. And then one metal wall frame here. Now jump over to the other side and do this again. I 
I use two ray symmetry for this part to save time. So you have to rewind the video and do this part again on the opposite side of the base. Now to finish the wide gap china wall. Place a window here with a half wall on top and a wall frame on this one. Then build a twig roof to get up and build another wall frame on top of the half wall. Remove the twig and then place two wall frames in the center, upgrading them to metal. Now do this again on the opposite side. For the central part, place two window frames on the half walls. Then put two wall frames on top. Then put a metal wall frame on top of the metal half wall. And then build your triangle roofs. You'll need to do this from above if you're on console. When completed, it should look like this. Again, you'll have to repeat these steps on the opposite side of the base. Now for the shooting floor. Position yourself here in front of the funnel wall. Place a triangle floor either side of the honeycomb and one here on the center frame. Then place windows, roofs, and then ceilings. Then place a triangle on here, two wall frames underneath, two more triangles attaching to it, and then low walls. Next place the triangle roofs. If you're having trouble, then the frames behind them need to be metal too. If you're on console, you won't be able to rotate them, so you have to find another way to place them. Now place a wall frame here with the door. The door must always be kept open to seal the gap. Then place a siren light here. Place a square floor here, making sure there's a gap on the left hand side. Then build wall frames in these slots. Seal in the roof making sure you've got a gap all along here. Now you can build the roof beaker. Now repeat your steps on this side in exactly the same way. When completed, this section should look like this. Again, I've used two-way symmetry for this to save time, so you have to rewind the video and watch it again if you've forgotten how to do it. Now to complete the shooting floor on the wide gap sides, place a square floor here, 
and then a frame here. Another frame, the floor, a window at half height, the other part of the floor, and then another window here. On top put a floor, and then your triangle roof. It must be done in this order. Next we'll build the central part, put a half height floor, a window at half height, the floor itself, and the same here, window, then the floor. Now in this gap put another square floor, and build this part. Next you want to add wall frames in these locations. Make sure that they're attached to the squares. And then you can seal in the roof. Now we jump up onto the top of the base, attach two triangle frames, upgrading them to metal, and then place the triangle roofs through it. You'll only be able to place the roofs through the frames if the frames are metal. Then place a window here, with a triangle roof facing outwards, a ramp, and a chain link fence here. And to the left of it, above the pickup, put a triangle roof. Now run over to the opposite side, and do the same again. finish, the wide gap side should look like this. Again, you'll have to repeat these steps on the opposite side of the base. And finally, we can complete the roof. In the centre, build half walls all around, just like we did in the open core with boxes underneath. Now put three wall frames here. Fill the left and right ones with doors. The door should always be kept open. To fill these gaps, you'll have to use siren lights. And do the same again on the opposite side of the base. On top of the frame in the middle, put a SAM site. And on top of the roof exit, build another turret pod. Then you can build windmill towers on top of these, going up by three floors. Thanks for watching. I hope the base serves you well. Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.